We are all about helping you grow as smart business owners and thoughtful leaders. And so are our friends at Signature FD. Signature FD is a wealth management company that believes people shouldn't have to wait until retirement to enjoy the wealth they've worked so hard to earn. Using their unique trademarked process, Net Worth While, Signature FD helps clients integrate and activate their wealth in four key categories, grow, protect, give, and live helping their clients enjoy their wealth now while feeling secure about their future. You can go and take the first step by discovering your net worth while with their free quiz. You can find it at signaturefd.com forward slash my GPGL. That's signaturefd.com forward slash my GPGL. The link's in today's show notes. Now let's get back to our conversation. Welcome to System and Soul the podcast focused on the human energy that runs your business. I'm Chris White, along with my co-host, Benj Miller. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. Jake, drop that beat. Three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to System and Soul. Benjamin Miller and Chris White coming at you live today. And uh, we got a returning guest. and We love having this guy. So I'm just Jonathan Reynolds from Titus Talent. Welcome to System and Soul, brother. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. I am doing awesome. Life is good. Lots to be thankful for. And this being one of them, sitting here with you guys, fine gents, uh, chatting about life, business, I don't know. Well, you Everything. just you you with your with your you know wonderful English accent and pronunciations, you just bring it up a whole nother level because we just we don't talk as eloquently as you do. That's right. I, I used to be like you. I could speak Texan and anything, you know. That's right. When I, That's first, right. When I first came here, somebody asked me where I was from, and, and I said I'm from England. And they said, Well, how long did it take you to learn English? <laughs> and I and I just, I was like, uh, oh, I, I just picked it up as I went along. No one really <laughs> taught me. Um, and I said, like, I don't know, maybe 18 years? I just kind of just over time, really. And she said, oh, you speak English in England? And I said, yeah, yeah. And they speak German and Germany, French and France. I said, funny, we speak English in England. I said, do you know you don't even speak English? And that just jaw drop moment. She looked at me like, I don't. And I said, no, you speak American. Yeah, yeah right. Right, so, you speak and I like proper think, English. I like to think she's still somewhere in Tyler, Texas, where I met this woman, <laughs> going around telling people she doesn't speak English. She speaks <laughs> Jonathan, you haven't been on here since we we changed our format a little bit, so you got to kick us off with something about you that we cannot go Google to find out. All righty, I asked my wife this, and she couldn't think of it either, so. I was a bit stuck, but one thing you couldn't Google would be something I think uh, well, most people in dreams, like things that they have hopes and desires for in the future. So I have not been a person who's good with prioritizing hobbies. And so I have this hobby that I really, really want to do. And next summer, I'm going to start it. And it's, um, it's called paramotoring. So it's like a parachute. Um, but you've got the big motor on your back and it's an unregulated sport, which means there are pretty much very few rules um, with the sport. And it's relatively safe because if the motor goes out, you've got a parachute. Uh, and I was living in San Diego when I saw it every day flying over the back of our house. And I'm like, I got to do this thing. So my wife said, when you lose 40 pounds, you can do it. I don't, know uh, that's, I don't know if that's connected to me flying or if she's yeah. just trying to motivate me. Just some motivation. But, um, I was going to ask why I'm next summer. The, now I'm in the Midwest and it's, it's going the wrong way. So. Yeah, what what, what are, are you waiting year. for? Um, well, I, it, it is true. I need to be under a certain weight limit. <laughs> um, okay. It's, 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 it's easier on the motor. <laughs> right, right. And for those for those who can't see me, I'm uh, 120 pounds. Uh, for those who have seen me, um, he's 120 stones. 120 stones. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit too much. Maybe, so, maybe yeah. a little bit. That's really cool. Yeah. You know, there there must be a club. You know, so I live in Florida, 
and there must be a club somewhere near my house because once a month about three of those things fly around our our airspace which is interesting because we're also part of the international flight path for the Orlando airport so a lot of those planes turn around overhead but these guys I don't do you know how high you can go in those you're allowed to go uh, I I heard twenty seven thousand feet, so I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, that's there's, really there's high. some great YouTube. There's some great YouTubers who just go like insanely high. Do you have to take off from a mountain, or can you take off like from the ground? You just take off. I mean, literally, if you got a bit, like, you can take off from a path. You just hmm. pop this thing on. You can get the thing in the back of a pickup truck or an SUV. I mean, they're pretty cool. You can't fly it in nighttime. Uh, other than that, you can't fly over crowds of people you could uh you, you just have to think of safety but other than that they're very i mean there's no age limit the youngest is nine years old in one. um wow so super fun so, yeah i'm interested it's um yeah so and you have, i don't know somewhere between 10 and 10 12 grand all in you've got all of your equipment and you don't have to get a license you can just literally figure out on your own or you could if you can be if you want to be wise you should probably get some lessons <laughs> I might take a lesson if I was doing that one. Anyway, so there you go. That's what you couldn't Google about me, but now you can because you know if there's a transcript. Well, of this, you, you, you put it out in the universe now, so yeah, I have to do it. If our listener out there doesn't know you or doesn't remember from previous episodes, you are the CEO of Titus Talent Strategies. You've been an awesome partner to us along the way, but you've had a you've had a crazy last few years, yeah, just kind of growth yeah. and and energy. Talk to us about that. Yeah, it's been really exciting, actually. I think coming, I think for many companies, you know, March of 2020, like the bottom dropped out, at least, you know, sometimes some of us, it was just like we thought it might drop out, just trying to figure out what was going to happen. And so we lost probably 30, 40% of our business over a two week period. And we have a team of salaried employees. Um, I think we had sort of 70 or so salaried team members at the time. And uh, pretty nerve wracking. Uh, we didn't lose anyone. Um, an amazing, um, amazing right hand uh, business partner, um, and uh, and he just kicked in the in the mode. He said, "Listen, we need to respond to the situation. We need to reimagine what the future post pandemic will look like, in our best imagination." And um, so let's reimagine it, and then let's rebound together and make sure every single person's on board, and let's figure out how we can make sure every single person in our company gets a bonus if we come through strong. And I'm like, love it. And uh, we did it. Uh, amazing, amazing rallying of the team. Uh, it was months, two months, and then we we popped back out. And uh, beginning of last year, 2020, what are we in, 22 now, 21, we were around 70 employees. We're 195, I think, today. Uh, wow. Salary team members in 25 different states. And uh, yeah, just massively envisioned uh, for where we're going. And uh, people are on board. and. Yeah, it's cool. It's Jonathan, how, how would you describe, because you're, you're um, spread out across the country with your people, mm -hmm. how do you, tell us how you build culture at Titus? Yeah, good, good. Um, so, I mean, it's, a, it's a obviously a big topic, um, like the rhythms of life, the things that are normal, the things that people expect how people come into our organization. We talk about our live values all the time. Um, uh, the values that we actually live out, not the stuff that buried down there. But um, So I'll just tell you on the front end, getting the right person in the company is really, really important. And um, I had somebody said it to me today, they just said, I own this company. I, I just don't know, how do you test and assess the value fit? And I'm like, well, wow, that's really difficult. Um, but, um, because people can say all kinds of things to you. But if you're really clear on what your values are and the definition and what that looks like by way of behavior in your organization, I'll give you a real simple example. Um, people, most people have some form or variation of the word integrity in their values. And so, um, and I always go, well, what does that mean? And they go, well, integrity. We do the right thing. I'm like, okay, well, what does the right thing look in your organization? Because I, I've traveled to 45 different countries and the right thing um, it's different to different people. Um, and what, what is acceptable and what they think is okay in business or in life. And so, so I said, well, we'll, we'll do the right thing. 
what does that mean? Well, we're going to be honest. We're going to tell the truth. Um, and we're going to build trust. I know building trust doesn't mean integrity, but is our definition. So if you if you you separate and disconnect trust, that would be a violation of one of our values, which is around all around integrity. Do the right thing, tell the truth, and build trust. And so in an interview, if I'm asking someone, hey, it's 12:15 on Tuesday, what, you, what did you tell your boss you're doing today? And they go, I just told him I was at the dentist. Duh, you know. Oh, that's a good one. So in the awkward moment where you didn't want to tell the truth, you just told an easy lie that's quite quite believable, isn't it? Because we all have to go to the dentist. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Well, I'll just, uh, we can end the interview right now because you violated one of our values. And if I hired you in six months' time, you said you were going to the dentist. What do I think? Like, you've already told me that you're going to say something that's not true when it's inconvenient for you. And so that's on the front end. I think it's really, really important that we're clear on how do I observe those values in an interview? And how do I, what kind of questions do I figure out if this person's got, got it? And you know, we get it 100% of the time. Mm, um, yeah. uh, but I think that's, I mean, how do you create culture? I mean, figuring out on the, what's the scorecard or something to make sure that you've got that, the heart and the value because everybody has to choose the day one, you've got to choose when a new person joins the joins the team. You want to look over them and go, I know that you you know, like I, I wasn't in the military. Chris, you're a military guy, right? In the military? No. Oh. Just a um, fan. Just a just fan. Me. Yeah. Um, but in the military, my understanding is if somebody's made it through all of those rounds and rounds and rounds, you trust them because you know they've gone through the gauntlet to get there. Um and I think if, if somebody knows that we've all gone through the same process to be selected, and then we're like, okay, I'm going to choose to believe that you live these values out, and then my expectation is, is there. Um, and then and then just the whole, you know, five dysfunctions of the scene, that foundation of trust. How do we build trust? What relationship? If, if my wife and I are in disconnect, I'm like, you know what we need? We probably need some time to talk. Oh, we need a date night. Oh, we need some time to actually, you know, connect on a heart level, not just kind of like, the to-do list stuff. Right. And so it's actually taking, how do you do that with remote? I think it was one of those big questions. How on earth do you have a tight culture with a remote culture? Well, I think it's amazing that we have as tight a culture as we do when we're 100% remote. But I think one of the secrets is we don't get to bug each other as much because we don't see each other in cubicles or interacting as much. So a lot of the, you know, idiosyncrasies that would irritate one another. Sure. You just don't, it, honestly, it's, it's harder to have a culture where people are gossiping. Hey, I want to interrupt today's conversation to ask you something. Do you ever feel like you're counting the days to retirement to really enjoy the money you are working so hard to earn? If this is you, I've got some friends I want to introduce you to. Signature FD. Signature FD is a different kind of wealth management company that's helping clients enjoy their wealth now while creating security for the future. They have a unique trademark process called Net Worth While, which helps clients integrate and activate their wealth in four key categories, grow, protect, give, and live. You can take the first step to discovering your net worth while with their free quiz. You can find it at signaturefd.com forward slash my GPGL. The link's also in today's show notes. Let's get back to our conversation. What I heard on the front end there was a, a really huge commitment, though, to the core value. Because when when you when you kind of throw them a little curveball and they yeah. swing and miss, you're done. Like like that line yeah. is drawn in the sand. We can end the interview right now. That's commitment to core value. Because that yeah. person, that person outside of that little question, could be stellar, right? Yeah. Yeah, which is, and for us, that's the, the no a-hole trick, right? So yeah. we have a no a-hole policy. Well, what does that actually mean? Again, it's not one of our values, but it's a no a-hole right. policy, if you will. No, um, and it's the second that you think that you're better than the team collectively, that you're the big man or the big woman who can get it done and no one else can. Like, that just doesn't fly with our culture. Like, we are better together than we are alone. We believe that. So for <laughs> Again, this, this all comes down to like getting the right person in the door in the first place. And we're 
I don't know, 98% success rate on it in yeah. general. Um, and, um, but that's another one of those questions that, that kind of looking for that a-hole trait, like salespeople are classic of this, you hire a salesperson and you want somebody who's like confident and the great connector of people, all this kind of stuff. And it's so easy to get, you know, get the wrong hire on sales. I mean, I, we find it's one of the hardest roles in turn. Um, and I mean, th- well, this is us, we're the experts at this and we're about 50, 50, 50, 50% success rate on it internally. I'm like, what the heck? You know, I just read it when someone goes, we need to hire more salespeople. And I'm like, nah, there must be a better way, you know? <laughs> um, and there is a better way. I found it. But, uh, but, um, but yeah, with, with the sales, I remember sitting in an interview with a really just killer salesperson. And I was like, how do I figure out this a hole trade? And I just said, tell me the biggest sale you ever made. And he went through the whole story. And I just said, okay. Um, and how did you, what was the gatekeeper's name? And I just, you know, T- tell me this person, tell me this person. And so here I'm getting my references right now, right? So I'm asking these people how he got this, this thing. And so I've got my list of people that I can call because his story, okay? And he's telling me all these things. And I said, wow, so how did you get that in the first place? Oh, this person introduced me. And I'm like, no way. So the biggest sale of your life, how did you thank John? And he went, you can't make that stuff up on the spot. And I'm like, no, specifically, how did you thank him? The biggest sale of your life. You've got the biggest commission of your entire life and you never thanked John. So you did it all on your own. Then. Did you tell everyone in your company it was you were, the, you were the big man? And I said, did they know that John really actually opened the door for you? Or did you not tell them that? Um, and it was just like he went white. And I'm like, sure. recognition and honoring the fact that you never did it on your own. You always stood on somebody else's shoulders. Like that's a part of our culture that we did. I have never sold a thing without telling the story of someone in our company doing amazing work. And so it's really important. I think that, you know, you figure out what kind of things are going to expose. Do you have the person who's got the right value system to create trust? And uh, yeah, I think it's really, that's just key, really key in culture. All right. I do not want a bunch of angry listeners. So how did you find a better way than salespeople? Oh, okay. This is it. <laughs> All right. Um, I think when you've got a company, you hire salespeople and they've got this certain DNA, all the, the typical DNA that we know, think of salespeople, these hunters and all this kind of stuff. I get it. They're out there. They're likable knocking on doors. Um, if people want to do business with people they like, um, we hire really likable people. And I was looking at our team going, okay, 190 something people. Um, they're really, really likable. Now, majority of our people on our team are in the role of recruitment, hiring, passive candidate. So they're really good at connecting people. And they are not our sales team. And if I told them, hey, I want you all to sell, they'd be like, I'm not in sales. Because they, they think that that's not, that's not what I do. So I'm like, okay, well, going about your day-to-day work, um, how do, how do I turn you into, you know, that you're actually thinking opportunistically about, you know, introducing us to the company? So I, I just said our biggest sales force will be our clients. Like our guarantee is if you work with Titus Talent Strategies, we guarantee that you'll refer us to another company, period. We're just going to guarantee it. That's what we live and breathe. We want to so wow and delight you that you tell somebody else about this. And Right out of the gate, I've just told you, you're going to be referring us to somebody else. And if not, we're going to fix it and make it right until you do. That's what we care about. Um, and so our, our team members, when they work with a company, all of the revenue that comes in from that company, that's how their annualized bonus gets funded. Okay. Uh, but it sits in a little escrow account, a little vault, and they will be able to access it at the end of the year to get, get their award, but only if the companies that they work with refer us to other companies. So now the company we've, you know, we're Inc. 5000 for the fourth year in a row, um, and which obviously is the financial numbers, um, but, you know, we're, we're proud of the growth. We've got 62% a year over the last three years. Um, and, um, you know, on average. Um, and, uh, so it's, it's great to see those things happening, but it's not by hiring sales teams. Um, it's by our partners or our clients, we call partners, telling other people about us. Um, 
and then figuring out ways to incentivize them that match our value system, which is really important. Like we, we want to incentivize people, but not in a way that's just like, it's just got to match our values because culture is so important. How we Everything, spend our Everything's money. anchored there for you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, even our kind of, sort of core, where we want to hit in 10 years time, which is 2030, um, it's the whole reason we want to, we want to grow is like, we want to grow so that we can give. Like, yeah. That's it. So um, talk about that because I know one of your things you're very passionate about is the idea of growing through generosity. Uh, yeah. You know, if I heard that for the first time, I might not even know what it means. So tell me what that means yeah. and tell me why it's so important to you. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to start by um, saying that from my worldview, I just think that we've got to live for something bigger than ourselves. And, uh, faith is really important to me. Generosity is a part and a, a part of that. Um, so there is a there's a big why from my perspective on those things. Okay, um, from a bit if I pure, pure put worldview aside and put a pure entrepreneurial or business mindset, um, I recognize that the generations in the workforce are changing value systems. So baby boomers um, average tenure was seven years, and a traditional value of the baby boomers was security. They're the children of the the parents of the Great Depression. So they talk about job security is really important. So you'll hear things like, well, average average employee tenure here is 27 years and people retire here. You know, that's great. The boomer's talking. <laughs> Gen X says, whoa, whoa, whoa. My parents weren't around because they were throwing all their time into the work. I want to be significant. So they want significance in the workforce. Their average tenure is five. So significance for the Gen X is like, it's just got to be significant. That's why they would be accused of being helicopter parents. Because I really want to be there with my kids. I want to be at every sports game, all this mess. Then you've got the, the millennials. The millennials are like, whoa, 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 keep it freedom. Stop hovering all over me. And they want freedom in the workforce. And so we kind of go, oh, these millennials, what do they want? They want beanbags and cool tables and just we've got freedom. Otherwise, they'll keep whining about something, you know? Um, you're like, okay, okay, okay. And then you've got the Gen Z and their average tenure is about two, two or three years, um, the, the millennials. Then you've got the Gen Z, big, a broader range, um, but they're going, no, no, give me purpose. It's got to matter. And so they want to choose companies. To, now, put this in the, in the workforce now. Average tenure for them is about 12 to 18 months. Now, they've got a lot less work experience, so that number's a little bit skewed. But if you've got seven, five, three, one to two, We've got a problem of retention because we've got generational mindsets. Give me purpose, give me meaning, give me significance, you know, versus job security and be thankful you have a job. Those days are gone. But it's partly our own problem because we've raised a generation that said, we're going to customize everything for you. It's all about you. And there's an act for this and that for that and that for this. And, uh, you know, yeah. And so now we bring these people to the workforce and they get bored within six weeks and they feel like they've mastered it. And you're like, Oh my gosh, you have to give mini promotions to everyone. So, but now going back to this whole thing, of when I look at this and I think our average tenure, I don't know, 30, sorry, average age, about 37 years old, it's how it is. Um, so we've got a, a whole average millennial, okay? But, and then we've got some Gen Z and we've got a full range. But I recognize from a business mindset, I am only going to, no longer going to hire more Gen Z than millennials. Majority of my hiring is going to be. And so significance and purpose is a really high value. Now, the work that we do, I can try and put a significant hat on, you know, we're in the business of talent. Isn't it really meaningful? Yes, it, I think it is. But people's day-to-day -day work, they don't necessarily see that in the sense of meaning. And so we put generosity at the front and forefront of why we're doing what we're doing, because we're, we're driving this thing of it's purposeful and it's meaningful what we're doing and it's significant. So we, we, we do have a giving goal, and that's the big part of our growth. First of all, we say growth equals opportunity. The faster we grow, the more we grow, there's more opportunity for you. So people should be incentivized to grow the business because it gives more opportunity for them to be trained, developed, promoted, yeah. more experience. Yeah. Okay, so they're all in on that part. But why is it really important? Well, there's the selfish part, you grow your career, and there's, there's the, the non-selfish part, which is we're doing meaningful things and purposeful things. So... We've chosen to give um, a certain percentage of our you know, revenue and our profits, um, but only to organizations that our people are involved with, because it's 
There's the emotional part. So if they're involved in their community and serving in some way, whether it be they're, they're coaching their kids softball, great. Well, if it means a lot to them to have our name, Titus Talent Strategies on the, on the shirts or on the helmets, great. I don't really care about it from the branding, but I want it to them to feel this is meaningful. My job is meaningful. It impacts my community in a positive way or whatever, you know, make a wish. They're involved in make a wish. So we're sure. giving to that. We don't write checks the United Way because it's, it's not an emotional tie to any of our people unless they're physically involved in that. Mm. Um, and it's the same. And we basically have applied that to our clients and partners. So you work with us. We want to give so every time we get new new clients. We ask them: Is there a, is there a not for profit charity or community organization that you, your spouse, your family are passionate about, your business is passionate about? Because we'd like to give you on it. And so it it fuels a connection of purpose and significance that propels our growth more than. Um, you know, hey, let's say what a Titus, great job. I bought a yacht. <laughs> <laughs> hey, podcast listeners, this is System and Soul coach Michelle Krulchak here to share a tip with you today that I give to my clients working to gain clarity and control of their businesses. The first phase of working with a leadership team starts by helping them get really articulate with the vision, mission, and values of the business. It's about getting everything out of their heads and aligned as a team. But the real magic happens when an organization puts in the same time and energy into pulling it through the rest of the organization. You help everyone clearly see what you can see and clearly understand their part in helping make it all happen. With clarity comes excitement, engagement, commitment, and probably the most important thing of all, trust. Mind you, it's easier said than done, but it pays off in spades when it happens. I hope you find this tip helpful. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. That all makes perfect sense. Explain to me the the difference between the Gen X wanting significance and the Gen Z wanting uh, purpose. Yeah, um, I mean, significance and purpose are pretty pretty closely tied words. I guess. And, and let me say this: You're like, where is this data coming from? Are you. <laughs> uh, it would be it'd be similar to me saying, well, women want this and men want this, or Hispanics want sure. this and Caucasian. huge stereotypes, I mean, massive stereotyping, right? Yeah. Um, did Richard Branson care about job security when he started Virgin? No, he didn't care about job security. You know, um, you want to go to space, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so you can't lump everyone in together. But as it's, it's massive stereotyping, yes. Um, so I think the significance of um, wanting to be involved in your a bit more significance of involved in your kids' lives, the family's life family connection was really, really important for Gen Xers. Um, and, and so that's, that you get see that a lot of investment goes into the family, getting lots and lots of opportunity. Is it kind of like personal significance versus, the, which is more like internal in me versus the, the purpose and matter to the world that we're in? Global yeah. citizenship? Totally. Exactly. That's it. So you might a Gen Xer might be like, man, I'm I'm really wanting my kids to have so many opportunities so they can figure out who they are in life. The Gen Z show up to work with an eight dollar coffee, and you're like, what? What are you doing? And they're like, no, no, look on the cup. There's this family in Guatemala. Look, read this story. Read this story. By me buying this cup of coffee, two dollars went to help this kid, you know, get educated so purposeful you know like yeah you know um and so i mean literally we were trying to figure this out three years back and i'm like we we hired somebody on our team to like half of their job was literally calling people that we had recruited and hired for our clients and calling them and saying hey i we, we know you've been there six months how has it been personally tell us the story of purpose and significance outside of the business like why has this made your life better? Yeah. And people would say things, well, now I'm, I don't travel as much and I know this and it's really meaningful. I'm there for the lives of my kids and uh, sort of wonderful, 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 great, great, great. Um, and then we would put down a little mini postcard and we would share it with our entire company. Look at what we've done, you know? And it's like just tying this whole thing of purpose and meaning. And if, if you remember in the, the Elf, you know, uh, the movie Elf, and it's like, 
that little like the little yeah. meeting armature going up, you know, yeah. and we the call it the meter. Yeah, um, of, of belief and you know Christmas yeah. spirit, and uh, we we want to try and tie meaning to what we do and purpose. So when we gather, we 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 bring in some of our not for profits to talk about this what they're doing that we're supporting because we do a lot of not for profits and uh, and and we give our team members opportunity to give financially if they want to, and it's like just tying them at heart to what we do. So. When I hear you talking, you know, we we have this little tool, the culture builder, and because, you know, a lot of companies and, and my early companies included, right, uh, discover core values and put them on the wall and culture, right? <laughs> and we yeah. all know like that's like a micro step to building culture. It's good. Yeah. It's good to display, but the, it's the commitment you make to them and 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 in our formula we talk about it's it's not just core values it's actually a combination of values plus habits organizational habits and and that's what i'm hearing mm -hmm. when you talk about how you move as an organization mm -hmm. to bring meaning and purpose right to, to everyone not just certain segments that's an organizational habit and it's the combination of the value that you hold mm -hmm. tight and dear along with your organizational habits, the way you move as an organization, you put those two together and that should create the culture that you desire. Yeah, I mean, totally. I'm, that, I'm that's, you, the, I'm that's the missing link, like, like, like organizational habits. Okay, we got the value, but how do we actually move? Like, how do we live out? that value yeah. with how do we actually display through our actions and our words so that's brilliant brilliant what I you're think, doing i think um i think i mean rhythms um just rhythm like kind of your tribal rhythms or whatever you want to call it like yeah, i think it's so important that people know what to expect like yeah. number one clarity what's the clarity do i know what's what's expected of me in my job like every single person needs to know quantify it what does success look like in my role? Because that brings peace to people. They know they don't show up to me and go, do people like me? Do they think I'm good? Are they, am I doing good enough? Am I doing good enough? Am I doing good? It's a horrible feeling to not feel like you're doing good enough. Um, <laughs> it's my life as a parent. <laughs> you know, um, but it's, um, um, and my kids used to think I was amazing until they became teenagers. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> um, anyway, but... Um, <laughs> So uh, I want to put some of our school school cards together for my kids, but that doesn't work. <laughs> I did the same Don't thing. Don't do that. Don't do that. This isn't a problem. <laughs> They'll come back around. Don't worry. <laughs> Jonathan, I always love your your heart and your energy. Um, I want to I want two things as we wrap up. One, um, please give us a tiny little commercial for Titus. Who who should reach out to you if they're looking for what? If you and your company have people you probably have problems um, um because i mean and that is what that's why i do what i do i find this so fascinating the world of people because you can't program people what's the secret source to hiring what's the science of hiring like, it's not we're dealing with people like i woke up today with a different perspective on life than yesterday just to the dynamics of my personal work like i've had some challenges today and so do all of our people so we have to work with if you, you want to figure out how to how to put your people first and have a people strategy for hiring, onboarding, engagement, retention, development, and performance management, creating a high, high performance culture, um, I would love to talk with you about it. Personally, I would, um, because anyone who's a, uh, a, a fan of you guys and what you're doing, um, I light up. Um, so... Uh, but yeah, I would love to personally talk with you um, about those things. We obviously have a massive team of people um, across the country and growing. Um, but hiring, engagement, retention, development, performance management, creating coaching cultures. Um, we've created some platforms to help do that, which is cool. Um, some tools um, that would obviously are very synonymous with systems that you've created. So, which is great. Um, but yeah, that's that's a little, little bit about where do they go to where do they go to find you or titus TitusTalent.com is the easiest place TitusTalent.com. you can find me on linkedin or any social platforms um 
Um, I have a book coming out in about October, first week of October, um, which uh, has been a long time coming. Um, yeah. So, so and I've had so, a sneak peek at that. So we'll have to get you back on for release yeah, and uh, look forward to and, and dive forward into to. all that meat. Uh, until yeah. then, parting shots, Jonathan. I know you're not you're you're never without something rattling through that brain. So, word of wisdom, encouragement, challenge for our listener out there. Oh, uh, figure out how to honor people in your company. They chose to join you. It was their choice. Obviously, it's your choice as well. Figure out the neat gifts that they have and how to honor them, how to make look them in the eye and let, you, let them know that you actually care about their life outside of work as well as inside of work. And um, there's a business strategy right there. You'll get, you'll get more out of people, but you'll actually find life more fulfilling because you know your people on a deep level. So. Cool, we'll Mike, drop on that system and soul. See you next week. Jonathan, thanks so much. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks a lot for having me.